What is the impact in housing market lending? What are some of the pros and cons in getting a mortgage today? Are you curious about that? Are you concerned about your real estate deals falling apart, getting all the way to closing and not being able to close? In this video, I will show you a meeting that I had with a mortgage lender, Arnold Rupchan, and how he sees the market today when it comes to getting a mortgage. When you're a buyer wanting to buy, when you're a seller wanting to sell, what are some of the pros and what are some of the cons in our marketplace today? Take a look. Okay, wonderful. Arnold Rupchan, we are so delighted to have you today. Thank you so much. Now, as realtors in this community, we want to survive. We want to grow our business. And not only that, but we look at you guys as lenders, as an integral part of our business. And we're so delighted to have you here today, Arnold. And we just want to take a moment just to say thank you for being here. I know you've been doing this for quite some time, but we want to ask you a few questions about the industry and just kind of like, where do you think things are going? So Arnold, first of all, please, if you would just take a moment to introduce yourself uh, to our audience and just kind of tell us who you are and how long you've been doing uh, mortgage lending. Well, first of all, thank you for having me here. Um, we as mortgage brokers, first of all, my name is Arnold Rupchan. Um, I've been a mortgage broker for 23 years now, a long time. I've been in the financial industry for 33 years. Uh, I've previously, before becoming a mortgage broker, I was an accountant. So I've always been, um, was the wrong numbers. Um, I mean, the industry that we're in, I mean, yes, you said we realtors need us importantly, but we also need realtors. So it's a back and forth thing between us. We have to, we cannot survive without each other. So to wrap it up with my stuff, my little history, I've been in the business 23 years and I enjoy every minute of it. I love what I do. And you could attest to that. Yes. I'm always here, available. Um, again, my name is Arnold Rupchan and thank you for having me on. Oh, Arnold, thank you. And yes, I can attest to that. You are definitely one of my favorite lenders. Absolutely. I appreciate you every time. So, Arnold, there's a, a few questions that I kind of put together. As realtors, we want to ask you, for example, uh, let's say a question that we have here. What are two to three cons in lending that you can give us today? Well, that's a very... It's in the, the lending industry at this moment, um, we have quite a few cons that come about because of the coronavirus, people losing their job, people filing for forbearance. It's creating a very big strain on the lending industry where people are filing for the forbearance. So the lender in return are not getting their mortgage payment, but we as lender, when we borrow the money from the investors to lend, we still have to pay that mortgage payment. So we don't have money to lend right now. So the lenders are changing their criteria. So the first con is that for an FHA loan, the interest rate now, I mean, the FICO score went from 580 to 640. You have to have a minimum credit score right now of 640 to get an FHA loan. A month ago, you could have a 580 or even a 550 credit score and we could get you an FHA loan. That's the first con. The second con is that the underwriters that are still doing loans because quite a few of the lenders that were doing loans has ceased doing loans because they don't have the liquidity to go forward. They're not out of the business. It's just that they temporarily put the criteria such at a very high level that we are not allowed or we cannot do loans for them. So the few lenders that are doing loans right now, they're overburdened with mortgages. So the underwriting time went from 24 hours to I have some loan right now for two weeks. I have not got an underwriter approval yet. Wow. So it's a very um, uh, stressful time for the lending industry because within that time period also, this is the third con, why is we waiting for that underwriting to come in? In between there, we are seeing every day, it would say um, COVID-19 update. This change within the lending industry, all of a sudden we have to start changes. A um, few of my loans I had to take in from one lender and switch it to another one because all of a sudden they cannot do that loan at the one lender. So the con is, is that the credit score and the uh, underwriting time. Also, 
at the last minute, last day of doing the loan, we have to call to verify that that person still has their job. I had one guy last week that lost his job the day before. Whoa. So those are the changes in the lending industry. So like I told you once in the past week here, let's not count our loans or our deal until they're closed. Yes. That doesn't mean I'm not, you know me, I'll work to the last minute. I'll fight that fight to get those done. So those are the cons. So you want to make sure you align yourself with the correct lender. There's a lot of lenders out there, but find the right lender to align yourself. And you want to be upfront, have them be upfront with you. Thank you. Yeah. I know. You know, I can agree to that because a lot of deals are just falling to the wayside and you have to really, as a realtor, real estate agent, you really have to partner up and get connected with the right lender that understand all these different disadvantages, changes in our industry right now. So Arnold, here's another question that we have as realtors. What would you say are some of the pros? You know, we have cons, we have pros and cons. What are some of the pros right now in lending that you can give us? What are two to three pros that you could give us in lending? Right now? Well, the pros in the lending interest rate is low. The Fed is stepping in right now because of the current situation and they're dumping a lot of money in it. The bond market the 10-year bond market that we follow, um, a month and a half ago, two months ago, it was almost at 2.6. Right now it's 0.7. So the interest rate is supposed to be coming down, but because there's limited lenders, the rate is still a little bit higher than what it should be, but it's also very low than what it was two months ago. The interest rate is very low. The second thing that I will tell you, myself as a, as a, a broker, what I what I do is that, for example, if the client with a credit score of 630 or 620 that could have gotten a mortgage a month ago, I have a program. It's called a simulator that I run through my credit system. It's free of charge. And we could tell you what we can do to get that client to that 640 score so we could still get them the loan. So the lending, the pros out there, the interest rate is the most important pros right now. And also the, there's few lenders that are still out there. They're seasoned lenders. So we will get loans done. There's a lot of rooms of getting a lot of area to get rooms done out there. Nice. Very nice to know that. So what I'm hearing you saying right now, Arnold, is that interest rate is low. So you're able to sort of like what I've been thinking about as a buyer, you could buy low. You, the payment could be low. So you kind of have an effect where your buying power is a little mm -hmm. bit higher than normal. Is that correct? Something? Correct. That is 100% correct. So because of the lower interest rate, a month or a month and a half ago, the rate was higher. So you probably would not qualify for that loan because of that higher rate. But today you have that lower rate mm -hmm. that you could get that house that you wanted a month ago. Wow. So I, I personally think it's still time to buy. Mm -hmm. It's a great time to buy out there right now because of the interest rate. That's the biggest pro right now in the market, the interest rate. Right. And it's there. Don't feel it's going to come down a lot lower. Take advantage of it because if this market takes off back, you might see that rate going back up. Wow. Because the bond market, so I mean, so you have, it, the pro right now is the interest rate. It's very low out there. And I say, take advantage of it. You know, that was our next question. You know, we wanted to ask you, Arnold. And is this the best time for a buyer to buy or not? Okay, so I, I like that question. Here, why? So I've been in business 23 years. Okay. So 2006, people bought a lot of houses, right? Yes. 2008, 2009, they foreclosed on it, right? A lot of those people went and paid rent for someone else. If they kept that same house that they bought in 2006, okay, and not pay somebody else's mortgage when they gave it up in 2009, 2010, Today, that house is worth almost a hundred to fifty thousand dollars more than what they bought it for in two thousand six. They would have equity today. So buying a house, it doesn't matter when and how you bought a house or what. It's always a good time to buy a house because if you don't buy a house today, you're paying somebody else's mortgage where yes. you're at. Yes. Okay. So today is a great time to buy. It's always a good time to buy in my book. You know, okay. you know, Arnold, what I'm hearing right now is like what you're saying, and I just want it's resonating with me right now. You're basically saying that look at the person that bought a house in 2006 
And had they kept the house, even that was the time when values were going down. It was low back then. Oh yeah, that values were going down and all kind of issues. But had you buying a property back then, bought a property back then, and just stay with it up to now, your equity comes back. Yeah, you would have had your equity back. Yeah, the price dropped in 2009 or 10, but if you kept the house, kept paying it, yeah. the value came back and came back higher, right? Now today, there are same people looking to buy the house at a higher value than it was. Yes. Um, so if you stick, any time is a good time to buy in my book, right? Like so it. you always is a good, because America is always where houses always go up, okay? The same in 20, I moved in 1989. Houses back then was sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. You cannot find a house today for that. <laughs> so buying a house anytime in my book, it's a sound financial advice because if you don't buy a house, you're paying somebody else's mortgage. Understood. Totally, right? totally understand. I appreciate so, that. Oh yeah. Understood. So, totally understand. But also right now, I also, one of the other reasons why I think it's good to buy in Florida, this is my opinion, is that with this current COVID-19 situation that we're in. Yes. Okay. Yes. Florida has a, a high number of it, but compared to a place like New York or the density area where people live in on top of each other, most people are going to start saying, you know what? I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to live on top of each other. Majority of the, the individuals are living in, in Northeast, New York, uh, New Jersey. I grew up in New York. It's Caribbean people. Yes. They're going to want to say, you know what? I'm going to move to South Florida. I'm going to buy a house for 300000 350 whatever it is. I'll get a job there. So... Yes, people are saying prices are going to come down, going to come down, but I think it's based on location. It's not, a, it's not going to be across the board mm -hmm. where prices are going to drop. And I think South Florida market, I haven't seen, I mean, you're the, you're the realtor. I've been looking at, I don't see it going down as much as people think it's going down. I don't so think true. price has gone down. So, so true. I, you know, and I think price of uh, South Florida, the, I think every day until now, the number of people that moved to South Florida is incredible. Yes, absolutely. You know? So um, I personally think that the, it's a good time to buy. It's a yes. great time to buy. And in my book, any time is a good time to buy because I hate paying somebody else's mortgage. <laughs> I don't like to rent. Yes, Arnold, thank you so much. Leads us into this other question. You know, you're talking about good time to buy and you're talking about the, our demographic, South Florida, what's happening? People are coming from North. There's always people coming here to the sunshine. Okay, I've got so many buyers. I've got so many sellers that ask me quite often, hey, Paul, is it a good time to buy? Should we hold? And, you know, the market's going to change. They're really speculating that the market's going to go down. And I have to tell you, I agree with you that, look, we're in a place where people love to be. So here's the other question, Arnold, that we want to ask you as one of the prominent lenders in our community. Is this the best time for a seller to sell or not? That is a very good question. Um, some of my, from experience of some of my current mortgage holders that bought in 2007, 2010, 2011, 2012, they have equity in their house. And they want to now take that equity and say, you know what? I want to move up the scale. I want to get a bigger house. I want to take the equity out of this house that I have sitting that's not really making any money for me. So, for example, you have a house that you owe 200000 currently on, but you could sell it for 300000 so you'll make a profit of 100000 Now, you could go buy a house for 400000 put put $100,000 down, and get a beautiful house with a conventional loan, so now that $100,000 equity is going to be working for you where you can move up to a bigger, uh, probably a different area that you want to be on. You want to be on a golf course, whatever. Now you could take that equity and buy. So it is always a good time to buy. It's a, once you have the equity to sell, it's always a good time to sell. But again, I get back to it. You will never lose the value in your house. Even if the value do go down, that we hear and people say it's going to go down. Look at 2008, for example. Price did go down, but if you kept that house, you would have had equity today in your house. Such a so good if, 
So if you sell today and you make some money, you buy a house and it goes down a little bit, you're not going to lose it. It will go up. We live in an area of America where it's very attractive. The weather, look outside, it's beautiful. That's true. Where else in the country you can have, it's going to be 34 degrees this weekend in New York, snowing, it's been raining. <laughs> you know, why would they want to live there all the time? That's why they want to come to Florida. This is a demanding area. And the price will go up. Price will go up. I agree with you, my friend. Thank so you. if you have the equity in it to sell and buy something else, I would say sell. It's a great time to sell. It's a great time to buy to answer the last two questions. Yes. I would, I'm, I'm a big believer in real estate. I, I live by real estate. I love real estate. It runs in my blood. My parents, everybody love real estate. But I would say it's always a good time to buy or it's a good time to sell to improve on where you're at or to, if you want to buy an investment property, take some equity out of your house to buy an investment property. There's different ways, but it's always, always, always a good time to buy and sell. If you're making the fine, make the decision correctly, call me, let's put together a plan. Let's see the different scenario. Let's run different scenarios and show how the numbers work. And from there, you can make that decision. That makes a good point. You know, Arnold, you are, you're very right on that. It's very useful information for us as homeowners to investigate. So just to get that point of view, where are you right now with your equity? Are you in the home of your desired dreams or is there something missing? You know, like Arnold is saying, do you want to be on a golf course? Do you need to be in a, a different school district because your children are expanding? They're growing older now and they need to go to a particular school district that you want to see for them. This is the time. This is the time to be able to sell right now and get your equity and move on. And then you're going to turn around and make that purchase when you're buying at a low interest rate or you're buying at a low ability so that your payments could be equal to or even a little bit more, not so much. You know, that's very fascinating. What an opportunity. Arnold, this brings us to the next question. We just have two more. We really appreciate you. That's all right. My pleasure. The next question is, what is your projection in the number of closings in South Florida for 2020, third and fourth quarter? Well, it all depends on this coronavirus. If we get a, a treatment, which I think we're, hopefully we have one of the medication that's working. And if we get a vaccine, if you get that by the end of the summer, or the first third quarter of this year, I personally think a lot of people who are, are like tied down that they can't make a decision is gonna just go free at that point. And this economy is gonna take off and it's gonna take off with a, with a big boom. So I personally think the, the, few, the end of this year is gonna be incredible. To put that number on there is very hard, yes. what it will be, number of closings and so forth. But I personally think the next, few years real estate market is going to be extremely great for us okay interest rate is going to be low inventory is going to be very tight a lot of people are going to want to move to south florida so i personally think once we find the the vaccine or some kind of medication to have people be a little bit more freer to go to that open house or to go see a house that they want to buy okay then you're going to see this market taking off because real estate is the backbone of the economy. No matter what people said, the backbone is people need somewhere to live. And the real estate is gonna take off. You need the second and third quarter of this year, especially the fourth, I mean the third and fourth quarter, the fourth quarter should be extremely um, profitable or a jump in the, in the real estate and mortgage industry. And I think we should prepare ourselves for that. Nice. I love your optimism. Not only that, but I always love your positive attitude towards our industry, Arnold. And not only that, but you've, you've more than 20 years. So you're wise. You have instincts. You have intuition and tapping into that. And I always enjoy my conversation with you. And thank you for sharing your projections on what you think we should have here in South Florida, which seems to be something that looks to be positive. More and more business for realtors like us. I appreciate that, Arnold. One final question, and we appreciate your time so much. So, Arnold, what is one thing that you could say to a real estate agent today in this kind of marketplace? 
service, build a team that will give service to your buyer. But I mean, what I mean by that is that you just don't take a buyer and say, you want a house for 300,000. Okay, I'm gonna show you the house for 300. Do what Paul Atkinson does. Call on and say, let's get you pre-qual first. Yes. We put together something for this individual. We give them the service they want and we be, um, you don't look at what you're gonna make on the deal. Look at what the service you're gonna to give to this client so that they could give repeat service to you. Yes. That's the most important thing. You have to provide that service, service business. Okay, and you as a realtor by itself cannot provide that service alone. You have to partner with a, a loan officer. You have to partner with a title company. You have to have that inspection. You wanna make the system, the process as easy as possible. Now, there is a lot of stressful part in the financial part of it, the, the mortgage part of it. Getting pre qual is not a loan. You have to make sure you have that loan officer that's gonna be there to make sure that if something goes wrong with that loan, that he's able to give the service to the buyer, to the seller, because now to the realtor, the listing and buyer realtor, that person who knows how to get that deal done. It all comes to service. You have to provide a service. If that means you have to do the deal for free, do the deal for free. That, I mean, just get it done because it'll come back to you. Service is the most important thing we could give to a client and love what you do. If you don't love what you do, I mean, I love what I do. I mean, like I tell everyone, you call me up to 10 o'clock at night. I answer my phone. If you call me, I answer my phone. But at 10 o'clock at night, I go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but service is the number one thing you as a realtor have to give to a client because they remember that. They'll remember you taking their phone call. Yes. They always have, um, we just closed a deal for a client uh, on Friday. Mm -hmm. She called me today with something. I took her call. I held her hand. Okay, those little things means a lot to a buyer. Yes. And if that means also calling, sometimes you and I got on the phone and calling listing realtor seller to help them with the deal, to hold their hand through them because a lot of these realtors get nervous. But the most important thing is service. Be upfront to them. Give them the expectation that you need. You know, you need this much money done. You need this for closing costs. Let them know upfront what they're getting into so it doesn't become... I like I tell you all the time, I don't like to resell a deal or tell somebody what the deal is at the end. Let them know upfront what they're getting into. Service, 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 service with it. Be upfront, put together that team. The team is the most important thing you can work. We're not a one man show. We all work together. Like in the beginning, you said you're happy that um, I'm here for you, but I, like I said, you guys are out here for me too. We're a team, it's a back and forth. Like, so that is my, my thing is service. You have to build a team to give the service to the buyer that you need or the seller. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Arnold, for sure. You know, in wrapping this up, I just want to recap of what we saw right here. We saw some cons that right now, interest rates, overlays, and uh, things that have changed, uh, credit courts, poor requirement, all those things have changed. But what are some of the advantages also, the pros? Right now, you can buy low. You could buy a property with a payment. You have more buying power. Uh, if you're wanting to sell, you could sell your property, get the equity and move on up into something else or some other direction. This is all good. Projections for this year, the rest of the year, 2020, uh, you know, looking to be very optimistically something positive for us. So this is an amazing time. Thank you, Arno. We always appreciate you. And any word, last word for us, we want to just humbly say thank you. Thank you. A lot of hugs for you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. You know, they say knowledge is power. It's always good to connect with people, to have a team, just like Arno had mentioned in our time together, talking about the pros and the cons in our marketplace today when it comes to lending and getting a mortgage. So many deals have fallen apart. So many deals are falling apart, but yet so many deals are still happening. Why? Because you put yourself together with a right team, someone that's knowledgeable, someone that has experience, someone that's able to use their mind and not only that but their experience to get the deal done so it's very important as a realtor that we stay informed and we provide our buyers our sellers information that can help them to get their deal done it was a pleasure having the ability to talk with arno rupchan about his perspective on what the real estate market has in store for us 
projections for this year, 2020. He's very optimistic. I, too, always share that positive attitude in feeling that my marketplace, no matter where I am, will always be on top. Many realtors are going to leave this industry, and a few will remain. Are you one of the few that remains? And how do you put your business together for the rest of the year? If you're that realtor, my hat's off to you, and I'm right there with you. So remember, in the description of this video, scroll down and click on the link that best suits you. There are information there that will help you to build your practice and how to get through this year. It's always a pleasure. And what I always say, what do I always say? I'm so excited. I will see you soon. Let's go get him, Tiger.